25. Looks nice. Is that what they cost about 23? Uh, I think it was 35 actually. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're at Wildwood Baseball Park on Mary Testweed Knauf Field where tonight the Sheboygan South Red Wings, first place in the Fox River Valley Conference, take on Green Bay Southwest. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is Greg Schwartz. Uh, Greg Shorty comes in 5-0. and uh, Southwest is 3-2, and so you know they got a pretty good outfit. I think they pitch pretty well. Uh, I don't know as far as statistics are concerned, but I had heard that today's pitcher is supposed to throw pretty hard, but he throws strikes, so we've already been told get ready to hit him. Now tonight, uh, South is starting Tyler Ebers. He's already got a no-hitter out under his belt this year, and I did have a chance to see him play when I was umpiring. He's something special. He throws about 81, 82 as a junior already, so you know he's really going to light it up before he's done in his career. Got a good breaking curveball, two-pitch pitcher right now, but that's all you need at this level. South has pretty good power. I know when I was umpiring here one day on the bases, the wind was blowing in, yet your son was able to cut through the wind and uh, knock one out. He's had three home runs this year, and he hit one right-handed, so... Now we can officially say he's a switch hitter. Tony Hoytink has good power. We hit pretty good throughout the lineup for at least one or two innings, and they're only young. They're going to get better, that's for sure. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the opening pitch for tonight's ballgame. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Adopt a child from foster care. Just being there makes all the difference. Pop quiz for you. In what movie did I play a gang leader struggling in school? Who was my teacher? What did I learn in math class? Oh, and here's one about you. What did your kid learn in math class today? Know what really matters. Know about your kid's school and know about your kid. Find out 100. No more. Do more. The United Church of Christ, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. If you're not helping after school programs, you're really helping to take them away. That wasn't very nice. After school programs, wouldn't you rather be helping? Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. People with diabetes are two to four times more likely to suffer a stroke than people without diabetes and many who survive are severely disabled. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Learn how to reduce your risk of stroke. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. Oh, I feel bad. I, I would have got it great for you guys. <laughs> we don't have any stats or anything anyhow. I can go by south a little bit, but I don't know what the hell Southwest is doing. You know any of those guys in football, Mike? Does the name ring a bell? Who you want? Yeah, oh, he, he's getting the, uh, the team list. He didn't have that yet. He forgot about it.
some of their stuff. Mikey, would you write down there? No, I'll, I'll get it during the half inning when Salt is uh, okay. batting. We'll share. Yeah, all I need here is you, you, you have to go when it's got to write it down. Yep. It's good to be an announcer. Do I have to do anything with these dials or anything? No. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Good. Fritz, are we on? If not, you got about a 30 seconds, I think, right? All right, you see Tyler Ebers warming up. Uh, Keith Bondi will be behind the plate. There you see Keith and uh, Dave Cordy's on the bases. Those two gentlemen are from Manitowoc. Doing the catching is uh, Ryan Lawrence. And you can run through some of those other kids, Shorty. I took a look at the forecast before we came. It was 50 degrees cloudy and a big green band of precipitation, although they said it wasn't supposed to rain. You and I did the pregame, and we have... Notice a little moisture is coming down, so let's get this one in. Yeah, really. Ian Evans at first for South, Jake Risto at second, Taylor Schwartz at short, and that's uh, Matt Hendricks at third. Looks like Tony Hoyt thinking left, Brian Burkhardt in center, and Trent Kerner in right, Ryan Lawrence behind the plate, Tyler Ebers on the mound with, uh, I think, 3-0 and record. Leading off for uh, Green Bay Southwest is uh, Nate Vendesky. Vendesky's playing at uh, in out in right field today. Ebers' first pitch is high and tight. Nice purpose pitch to start the game. Tyler throws about 81, I think I'd say maybe 82. Good breaking ball. Right now, he's a, as we said during the pregame, he's a two-pitch pitcher, but working on a changeup. Well, you mentioned, too, at this level, you can get away with a, a good curveball, actually. Even a roundhouse will fool a lot of kids. but uh, High school, but G Legion now. Yeah. It's a little bit more difficult. Right. Swing and a miss by Vendesky. Makes the count uh, one ball and two strikes. To be able to hear you better when you get the mic right up there, Shorty. Okay. I only get to do this once a year, or I should say maybe twice. One football game gets thrown in there. One, yep. two count. Thanks a lot for helping out. Uh, Greg was short notice, <laughs> emailed him this morning. Ryan Lawrence oh. on a great attempt, but uh, couldn't come up with it. Went after it the right way. They, that started, what, about 10 years ago, Marty, where they slide yeah. into the fence? I think that was uh, Ben Ogilvy in uh, Baltimore in 82 when he made that catch. Well, anything that sliding, you don't want to bring his name into. If you remember that, it's amazing he never broke his leg in several places, but nevertheless, uh, you can't tell major leaguers to slide too much anymore. Now that you and I had to learn, remember? Bear stocking foot on the grass. Yeah, really. Curveball is up. It Evens much account. Bite. Evens account at two and two. Crowd's still piling in. I think we just have number 19 down there. Just came in. <laughs> 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 and I don't mean his number either. It's his ticket number. It's a Line solid drive. Line drive. Out left. Staying up. Okay, Coming Tony in comes in. Tony Hoytink making the catch. That brings up uh, Nick Bacon. Mike Rank is the field announcer. We're uh, teaming up. So he hit that ball on this solid part of the bat. Breaking ball starts on the outside corner at the knees for strike one call. Ebers in the windup. Another breaking ball. Ooh, that was a dandy. Broke right in there. Makes so it count 0 and 2. South only has three seniors on the entire team. That bodes well for the future. However, uh, the seniors you're losing are some awfully good ball players. We, you know, I guess we were picked, from what I understand. Nice pitch, high and tight. Chased it. Uh, as I think they quoted Taylor in a paper last about uh, being picked once before, and that was for football, and things didn't work out. So he Yeah, right. 
Now batting is uh, Ben Chester. Chester playing at shortstop. No, that's names familiar. I think maybe he was a quarterback. Does that sound right? Uh, boy, you know I don't remember. That's a that's or a running back. I remember yeah. hearing his name. Took a breaking ball. He kind of uh, buckled his knees for a call strike one. You know, sometimes I think not having a good memory is good when you're an umpire. You give the guys more of a fair <laughs> fair shake, you know, instead of uh, holding a grudge. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's not so good. You like to be able to remember some of those. Especially in baseball, you know, all the statistics they have, that's for certain. Jeez. Well, my wife, she, we go around and around. You remember all that stuff, but you don't remember when to go to the store. How about our anniversary? <laughs> Quick, Marty, when is it? Hey, over 30 years, I've only missed it twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Uh, this will be 25 coming up. I haven't missed it at all. Really? We have a baseball game every summer, so we don't like to bring that up, by oh. the way. <laughs> November 2nd, I believe. Okay. <laughs> Swing it ah. a high pitch, and it's strike three, and it's up one, two, three for uh, the Trojans. They're down at the end of a half inning of play. Southwest nothing. South coming to bat. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You got to put it in stocks. If you want to get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CDs. Get it balanced. Oh, no, you just uh, need to do Stick it under the mattress. <laughs> you want Getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. So Eber started a couple hitters off in that first inning with breaking balls, and then he threw him a high fastball, basically a waste pitch, and two guys went after it. So a solid first inning. For uh, Southwest, uh, Ryan Sullivan will be doing the pitching. Er Eric Marcuson will be the catcher. Uh, we really don't know too much about uh, any of the players from Southwest, actually, unless uh, we recognize their game from some or their name from some other sport. But we do know they're uh, three and two in conference, five and two overall. And uh, if records mean anything, you'd have to suspect they're a pretty good ball club. Yeah, I think they're in that next echelon. Uh, I know South, uh, Notre Dame, and perhaps Manitowoc are supposed to be the front runners. And I think uh, Southwest was kind of right around the next. And after that, I don't know. But so they may be okay. We well, don't have... Uh, you guys beat Manitowoc already. Yeah, 5-2, uh, to two, their pitcher pitched pretty well. We got to him with a, matter of fact, a three-run home run. I think it was in the fifth to, to break that one open. Yeah, it weren't uh, you guys, that was the game that I umped. Yeah, I was going to say, we didn't you ump that one, right? They two were down and then uh, came back and grabbed the lead. That's when the wind was blowing in. I didn't think anything would go out on that day. South has been, uh, well, we've been letting teams hang around. And so far it's been okay, but you'd like to reverse that trend and you know jump on somebody early. John Caballo lead it off for uh, the Red Wings. Uh, this might be Retro Tuesday, so it might be the Redmen today. <laughs> John Caballo. You've said that a few times over the years. <laughs> He's uh, the DH batting for uh, Matt Hendricks. Hendricks over at third base. Caballo. John usually plays left field. Uh, that's oftentimes when Tony Hoytink's on the mound, so Tony's in the outfield today, so they thought they'd give him a DH role batting for Tyler Evers. Sullivan, uh, big right-hander. Good breaking ball on the outside corner for strike two. Good place for it. If you're southwest, that is. Yeah, really. I don't know. Ah, fastball away. Went with it nicely, but right at the right fielder. Making the catch out there in right field was uh, Nate Vindesky. Nice adjustment by John. He's usually a pull hitter. He Went out that way nicely. That's actually Vinoski, pardon me, out in right field. Now batting second is the second baseman, Jake Risto. Jake's dad is down there doing crowd control. Jake is having a good start. He's sophomore. This is, I think he's second in the team in hitting right now, so I don't know any averages per se, but I think he must have about nine or ten hits already. On deck is your son, Taylor Schwartz. His average, I happen to know. I'll bring it up later. <laughs> I heard, you know how many first pitches he hit? And 
How many second pitch curveballs he uh, took out to right? Well, when he has bad at bats is when he hears it. I don't care if he makes out, you know, how baseball is. You can't steer it, but certain things you can help yourself with. Drops down a little bit when he throws his breaking ball. Comes down more three quarters. Count is uh, one ball and two strikes on Risto. Good patience by Jake on that one. He had a good shot. Takes that pitch high. Evens the count at two and two. No score. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Uh, South coming in with a 4-0 record in conference. And uh, in first place in the Fox River Valley. And... Uh, I don't know about you, Shorty, but I think they're the real deal this year. They really have a good chance of well, uh, winning leap. Winning you know, all levels of baseball is based on pitching, let's face it. And uh, Ebers, Hoytink, and Schwartz, the three of them, I think the most they've given up in any game so far has been three runs. And uh, that one nice thing that bodes well for that, ooh, nice breaking ball missed, is that uh, on the road, if you have pitching, you're still in the ball game, you know. So right. I'm not too worried about the road games as you would be might otherwise. We haven't had any except for a couple non-conference, but. Full count pitch to Risto is called strike three. Looked like it might have been a little off the outside corner. but uh, uh, Made up for the one the pitch before. Looked like it was a pretty good pitch. This one was a couple inches outside. But if it, as they say, if it's too close to. Yeah, should be swinging at yeah. it. Yeah. Now batting is uh, Taylor Schwartz playing shortstop today. Why don't you tell us his average? Well, it's 12 for 24. He's walked nine times, and of those hits, he's got uh, three homers. And he hit one right handed for the first time in his career Saturday, so now we can officially say he's a switch hitter. I uh, was doing the doubleheader over at uh, Field of Dreams for North South, and uh, after the first game, uh, John Van Vagel called over, and, and uh, Chris's wife said, Well, we're in the ninth inning, and Zemendorf just walked the leadoff hitter. Or the seventh inning, I believe it was. Uh, fifth is when he blew up, yeah. I but think it was, it was the two sixth. to two at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Top of the sixth, I think. Top of the sixth, you're right. Actually, yeah, again, they let That North was a big doubleheader for you guys. You know, usually it's pretty common that you split doubleheaders, but uh, you're able to take them both games. We uh, let the teams hang around a little bit longer than we'd like. And when you do that in baseball, things can happen. Harry swung at a pitch in inside part and didn't get the bat head out. Uh, two balls and two strikes. Two outs, nobody on the first inning. On deck is uh, Tony Hoytink. Breaking ball down and in. Another full count for uh, Sullivan. He's been going deep into uh, the count with the batters descending, loading up on the pitches. Appears to be a two pitch pitcher again. Bouncing ball foul. You know, you can up that repertoire by one real easy by just throwing a change up. Yeah. Uh, you know, easier said than done. You need the arm speed. Everybody thinks if you lessen, you know, take some off the fastball, it's a changeup. But, mm -hmm. but uh, you need to work on the arm speed, which is the hard part, of course. Sullivan in the windup, the three-two pitch. Curveball, he should have let go. It's a decent curve. It has some bite. Well, we're at the end of one inning of play. It's no score. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Nuclear weapons materials stored in laboratories and other facilities. Some protected by just a chain link fence. Terrorists are trying to steal these materials to make a nuclear bomb and attack us here. We need to stop them at the source by locking down the materials. There is something you can do to protect America. Visit saferworld.org. Be part of stopping a catastrophe before it happens. Six. All right, back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park, and there you see uh, Tyler Ebers uh, getting ready for uh, the top of the second. Leading off is going to be uh, Jesse, Jesse Rush. Off the bat, number five, Jesse Rush. 
steps in. He's a right-handed hitter. Looks to have good power. Pops that one right up the chute. Risto underneath it and makes the easy catch. Well, this is a, a game where I think the in from that play, Jake probably glad the sun wasn't out. That's always a tough sun field this time of the day. Second base, right field, first base. The fans still pouring in there, Marty? Uh, I think... Uh, Jeff Risto is doing one heck of a job with these 20 fans we have. I think one just walked in before. <laughs> I told him he needs to settle <laughs> down this side where all these Southwest fans are. I think there's eight, no, seven of them right in front of us. Started him off with a breaking ball. Pitches up and in. If you're going to throw a lot of breaking balls, that's a good place for his fastball. Well, goodbye. That pitch is down low. That was a key for, yeah. Trying to get the stats caught up. We just got the lamps before the game started. That was all Kerry Coutzer's fault. They're too busy at the concession stand. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot, Kerry. Couple of hot dogs, bag of <laughs> chips. <laughs> Dick Oldrich, I'm sure, is in the stands running it for the Sheboygan A's. Oh, big breaker. I pull that one down, eh, Shorty? Yeah, I kept that one up. Full count. No score. We're in the top of the second inning. Southwest comes in with a 3-2 and two conference record, 5-2 and two overall. Pitch is way inside. So with one out in the second, Robert Bowers uh, drew a walk. Marty, in these cold days, what does he what does he ump allow a pitcher to do? Uh, as long as you wipe off. Uh, now batting is uh, Ryan Sullivan, the pitcher. Number 21, Ryan Sullivan. Can you uh, go to your mouth on the mound as long as you wipe it off in the you're cold days? You're not supposed to be on the rubber. Right. If you're straddling, you could and wipe off, and that'd be okay. Okay. They're pretty lenient. You know, it's not like in pro ball where you got to be on the grass. And Although even there in cold days, they'll sometimes make for allowances. And today's yeah, one of those days. Let them blow in their hands, but not, okay. not actually lick on it. You know who this affects oftentimes? Our infielders are making a quick throw. That, and I think that if you have a slow-working pitcher. True. Or ball one, ball two kind of thing. You're and you right. get back on your heels. We're joined up here by Steve Reiner and Fritz Zank. On the uh, camera right there that you're looking at is Eric Wiesman. And uh, as we speak, Scott Miloff in the truck spinning the dials. That's our crew tonight, or this afternoon. Greg Schwartz on color, Mike Martin play-by-play. -play. We got all the bases covered, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pun. Put two fastballs in the outer half of the plate, not allowing a left-hander better with that hole in the right side to shoot one through. Kept it out there and didn't have much of a swing. Sullivan goes down on strikes, and that brings up the catcher, Eric Markison. So I think Tyler has probably been averaging close to two strikeouts an inning. He's getting a lot really? of K's this year. Holy cow. That's really got to be boring for the fielders. So far, what do we have? A pop-up and a line drive, right? Everything else has been keys, yeah, I think. Kind of a line drive out to uh, Hoytink on the first hitter, and then the next two guys struck out. In this inning, we've got a strikeout and a pop-out, you know, surrounding that walk. Be surprised if they don't send a runner somewhere in this at-bat. Well, Ebers stepped back, anticipating what you uh, were thinking, that the runner was going to be going. Pitch way inside. Good catch by Lawrence. Ryan's come a long way. He worked hard on his um, on catching during the Legion season. And as you baseball fans know, that's the extra season that these kids need if they want to be baseball players. Well, I think uh, one of uh, Ryan's claim to fame is uh, he was a longtime bat boy for the Sheboygan A's, so he's got a lot of background in terms of uh, baseball. I remember that when we coached uh, one of the traveling teams in town, and it uh, – a couple of things happened, I think injuries, and we needed another player towards the middle, and I had Ryan in class, and I asked him if he wanted to play with us, and sometimes he had to see what the A schedule was, so he was pretty dedicated to oh that, yeah. that's for sure. 
Well, and the other thing that, that you like to see is his mom and dad were real supportive. They'd be at the game. And, you know, all that stuff is real important, I think. Well, you know that from teaching. Well, you know, and, and that's another thing. I always get on to some of these kids nowadays. They're not the students of the game they used to be. They don't watch and analyze. And that's where I think you and I learned most of our baseball from when we were young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And there weren't the amount of games on. There was no such thing as ESPN. or. Well, I'll tell you who was really uh, a student of the game, I think, more than you and I were, was uh, Dick Rasmussen. Yeah. He was a good baseball guy. Line drive out to right. Ah, he had uh, him played perfectly. Get scouting report on that one. Yeah, Trent Kerner making the catch. And that ends the inning at the end of an inning and a half. Uh, Southwest zero, south zero. What do triglycerides or trigs have to do to get noticed? Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglyceride, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. Here we are, back in the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, Sullivan warming up, waiting for his catcher to get ready. Marcuson uh, made that last out, hit a line drive to right field that Kerner made a nice play on. Both teams looking for their first hit. First base runners. Oh, no, they just got one on a walk, that's right. But right. No hits, though. Let this be the last time we say that, right? Yeah, really. Isn't that the truth? Matter of fact, Hunter Ebers had one that... Uh, at uh, Milwaukee Hamilton, I think it was the third game in the season. It was about 34 degrees, cloudy like this down there. And I think after the game, we were asking how many hits did he give up because we couldn't think of many. Then uh -huh. it came out, and we figured it out. None. Nope. In the water, I couldn't remember any. Really? We're on the infield uh, for Southwest. They have uh, Bowers over at first. Uh, Jansen is uh, the second baseman. He's being DH'd for. Uh, Rush is over at third. Buster is at short. From uh, left to right, it's Bill Meyer in left, Bacon in center, and Vinoski in right field. And uh, Hoyt team takes that first pitch for a ball. Starts him off with a breaking ball. In the ba uh, Pardon me, in the on-deck circle is Ian Evans. Uh, there's a guy who'll talk your head off. Ian. Yeah, Ian. yeah, he likes to talk. You're right. He seems to have uh, the rundown on every team and every player and tells us what he did in the Wood Bat League in the fall. And but you know what? Uh, Vinoski made that catch out and right. Uh, what he does, he keeps the team loose. You know, he's talking it up at first base. Yeah, he's a baseball guy, too. I know he's always followed it. I coached him in the traveling team when he was a little guy, too. And I know... Uh, Evans with a good cut, but he came up empty. He's always liked baseball. First, be before anything else, I know. They had a nice uh, preps spotlight on uh, Tyler Ebers the other day. And uh, you, know, you can tell he's really dedicated to the game, too. Well, we got him over there, off the bag. Yeah, off the bag. Hump gave it a look, didn't make a call, and said nope. That's going to be an E6. Sullivan has a few words for him. Kind of a lackadaisical effort. As far as the call was concerned. Well, the coach is out questioning the call and uh, asked, uh, actually, the coach asked uh, Cordy, the base umpire, to ask his partner if he was off the bag, and uh, Bondi gave the safe sign that he was off the bag. Now, since there were no other runners to worry about. Yeah, it's, he had good coverage. He walked out or ran out, right. I should say, down the line. Just like you're supposed to do. Well, you know, and that's relatively new too. I'm asking for help. Remember, what, 15, 20 years ago, you never asked for that. help. It would be like uh, saying, "Geez, I'm not sure of the call." You know. Trent Kerner is the batter. Kerner, the right fielder today, on deck is Ebers. Trent's had some action in right field already this ball game. Here's a line drive. Base hit for Trent. Nice. Base hit out the left field. Evans is going to pull up at second. 
A nice stroke that time. He's been hitting a couple of atom balls this year, so it's time he got one to drop in. On, uh, when I was out in Arizona at a, at a high school game, this kid just ripped the ball out the center field. And the center fielder never had a move for it. It's right there. And the guy was sitting next to him. He says, you know, that guy's been sitting out there for 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think about those atom balls. True. The guy's been there for 150 years. Uh -oh. Evers on a bouncing ball to short. Nice play. I think Good his name is Rush, right? Uh, scooping it up was Rush and threw it over to his uh, teammate at first base, Bowers. And uh, Evers moves the runners up, but there is two outs. So there's a time for one of his breaking balls in the dirt, perhaps. Yeah, Ryan Lawrence stepping in. Uh, Lawrence a good hitter. He knows what he's doing up there. He's been hitting some line drives. He's, he tweaked an ankle oh, about the second game of the season, and he was missed about four games behind the plate. And he did pinch hit in one and showed that his stroke was still there, and he's been hitting some line drives. So Lawrence standing in there, takes the first pitch for a strike on the outer half. Good comeback last night by the Brewers, down four to nothing. Won it in twelve, five to four. I saw uh, Fielder hit two home runs. Yep, Hardy hit one. Pinella must have taken that one hard. He often does, right? Oh, that's right. You know he's going to make a difference, but I still think you need uh, you need a little more than what they have. That was another strike on a look like another a breaking, breaking ball. ball. Yeah, two breaking balls to Lawrence. Oh and two the count. Two outs. Runners on second and third. And a third breaking ball. That one outside. It was a time for a fastball up. Or a breaking ball off the outer half. Sullivan in the windup. 0-2 pitch. 1-2 pitch, pardon me. That pitch is up. And that was a something other than a curveball that time, Shorty. Yeah. Well, again, he's a two-pitch pitcher, but he seems to be throwing all right, velocity-wise. Runners get their leads. Line drive out. Actually, on the right side out of bounds. It appears to be a late breaking ball. You notice that breaking a little bit towards the last last couple seconds. Follow that one off. Fall it off nicely. Cloudy, windy day here at the ballpark. Yeah. That pitch is up. That loads it up at three and two. Brad Burkhart uh, in the on deck circle. So he'd like to sit on a fastball now. Get a good lead at second base. Get out there. Nobody's making any attempt to hold him. And Line there's a drive. base hit. Base hit out the Atta center boy, field. Ryan. That pitch looked to be up, Shorty. A fastball. Well, and he got uh, his count and sat back on one nice two out, two strike single. Well, the other thing you got to like about it, that's your number eight hitter driving in the runs. I'm guessing he's batting eight because of uh, the ankles a little bit weak yet. But because uh, uh, you told me before the game you had mentioned what his stroke seemed to be pretty good, and there's an example of it. Again, he worked the count, however. He didn't take chase the breaking balls early. Brad Burkhardt, the center fielder, stepping in. I didn't get who's pinch running. Did you get the number? Uh, no, I didn't. Number five? Oh, Charlie Rissi. Rissi. Yeah, Charlie Rissi, the pinch runner over at first. Charlie's an outfielder, been moved to first base this year. One of Coach Rank's D-backs, at least last year, right? This year also, okay. He's going on the pitch, had a pretty good jump, and basically no play. Stolen base for Rissy. Pitch was on uh, the outside corner. Actually, a pretty good pitch to throw on, but I think they caught him by surprise. It, yeah, all First the way around. First pitch steal. The catcher didn't snap out of there, that's for sure. Rissy on at second base. Burkhard with a chance to... Uh, Add another run for the Red Wings. They're up two to nothing. <laughs> Check swing, but he went around. Evens the count at one and one. I think that first pitch was well. We'll see. The scoreboard has it as a strike. First pitch was a strike, was it? Oh uh, yeah. If the scoreboard's correct. And Breaking it was pitch. as he buckled him for strike three. It is strike three. Yeah, that was a dandy curveball there. Burkhardt caught looking, but. The Red Wings break through with a couple of runs on two hits, and at the end of two complete innings of play, it's south two. Green Bay Southwest, nothing. This is a banana. This is a cat. This is fire. This is harmless. 
and actually helpful to some people. Don't believe everything you hear. The fact is that every major health organization rejects smoked marijuana. Now that the smoke is cleared, discover truecompassion.org. The most dangerous thing our kids have to deal with today isn't violence. It isn't drugs. It's unhealthy food. Too many of our kids are overweight. They're headed for diabetes, heart problems, or worse. They need to eat healthy things like vegetables, fruits, high fiber vegetarian foods. As our kids grow, the right foods can help protect them from obesity, heart problems, diabetes, and even cancer. To find out more, call for a free booklet or visit our website, kidsgethealthy.org. Just basketball, okay. Talking with Mike Rank, the field announcer. He's a head basketball coach out at uh, Random Lake, but teaches here in Sheboygan. That's a long drive, Mike, every day during basketball season. Fastball strike in the outer half. Hey, leading off for uh, Green Bay Southwest is uh, Sean Bielmeyer. Bielmeyer is uh, nice breaking playing ball. out in uh, right field. Pardon me, left field. As you know, what a different strike one makes in the whole at bat. Oh, I thought uh, Tom Fogel had one of the great lines that a coach can say the best pitch in baseball is strike one. Yeah, it is. You weren't kidding. It set that whole at bat up, got a breaking ball, didn't look good on that, and kind of fastball down low, and three pitches, goodbye. Grab some bench, what as Hall Carlson would say. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good, good night. night. <laughs> Grab some bench. That strikeout number four for uh, Tyler Ebers. And uh, foul ticking it in the mitt was uh, Mike Lang. Number three, Mike Lang. Two so fastballs yeah. put right past him. Might want to stay with the fastball on this guy. It sure looks that way. Don't speed his bat up. Well, yeah, right. Don't hang a curveball, something he can catch up with. Now, is this their number nine hitter? Number nine. And he comes with the fastball, fouled it straight back. Shorty can get out from underneath the table now. <laughs> <laughs> the screen stopped it. Well, it's an exceptionally thick screen anyhow. I know if I'm trying to video through it, you're safe behind that, but we are in a glass Yeah, it's enclosed with glass besides. Breaking ball is high. He's left a couple up, and I don't think pitching coach Will Matson is here yet. He's taken, or he just arrived now. He has a new job with Coke, I think, this year, and he's been a little bit Shall we say tardy, tardy. some of these games? I don't think they'll fire him. He got his bat on the ball, slipped one over to third base, nice throw across. And, uh, now, I know they cut the grass up. last week, but uh, it still takes uh, a cannon shot to get it through the infield. Oh, that, yeah, you're not going to hit a ground ball through the infield. Matt Hendricks uh, making the play over to uh, Evans. Thanks a lot, Kerry. Appreciate the soda. Breaking ball is up to the leadoff hitter, Nate Vinoski. He hit the ball in a pretty well first time up, line drive to left. Yes, he did. Ebers uh, delivers a good fastball. It's fouled straight back. You know, they say about those foul balls that go straight back, you're like a quarter to half an inch off, you know, from hitting a line drive the other way. You're right, right on him, supposedly. I still see a lot of kids when they fall one back running down the first, which always confuses me. How can you do that? And you see more than you'd think, you know? Doing that, uh, I ain't got to mention names, but doing that uh, JV game, doubleheader on Sunday, the one batter, I just got missed by hit, you know, he hit the ball, he threw the bat, just missed me. Second time up, he threw the bat, hit the catcher in the wrist. <laughs> At that point, you say something to the kid. True. Third time up. Throws the bat again behind us. You know, I don't know. It was just like being at Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> of which you're an institution over there, I understand. Uh, I think mic. that is the institution. <laughs> 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 One ball and two strikes to Vanoski. Ever's looking to sit him down, throw him a chair, as the kids say. Last couple of breaking balls, he hasn't been able to get on top of them. Gotta pull her down. That fastball right down the middle, retreating and making a nice grab out in right field for the Red Wings. 
was uh, Trent Kerner, and that's uh, his second nice play of the ball game. Went to the spot nicely. He turned, made a nice play. All right, at the end of uh, two and a half innings of play, South on top, two to nothing. One day, you were simply struggling to be a dad. The next, you're coping with a diagnosis of childhood cancer. CureSearch.org can help. It's run by doctors and scientists whose research has led to an overall cure rate of 78%. You're not as alone as you feel. Well, two runs may stand up. Back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park, there you see uh, Sullivan and Markison warming up. Sullivan, the pitcher for Southwest, South on top, two to nothing. They're in first place in the conference, and uh, you got to keep winning. Don't worry. We, one at so a time. Like a three-way tie for second, or was it first place last year? Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, second place. And uh, we lost by one game. I think last year North took first, and we beat them. We came lost by a game, but we beat them in our. I was going to say it's games like this. You know, that you got to win. You're playing a team that you should be better than, and you're at home. Uh, you got to win these games, and uh, right and now, yeah, South is doing a good job. Even with the weather the being the way it's been, we've only lost. I uh, have to make up one game against uh, Green Bay East, but uh, we got a game Thursday, and we got doubleheader Saturday, so now we're starting to pile up. Yeah, we are pretty deep in the mound. We've got three solid starters and a couple of kids that throw well that we really haven't needed. Well, and Evans looked pretty good in that uh, one game. I think it was uh, the Valders game on Monday last week. Plus, he's got what you Throw have. strikes. And he's got what you have, which is being left-handed, Marty. Yeah, really. Got to like that. Popping out for uh, South was uh, John Kabai. And now stepping in is uh, Jake Risto. Risto hit a line drive out to uh, right field that was caught. He's 0 for 1 in the ball game. He's the other one that throws pretty well, but there won't be a lot of innings for him probably. till next year. You know, yeah, or unless maybe the non-conference game on Thursday. Pop up into uh, left field, and making the catch was the center fielder, Nick Bacon. Now, could be a problem. We were informed it's raining. It's, it's hard to see right now, but I see it dripping off our roof right here. Oh, I didn't notice that. Good eye, Shorty. Well, those shorts. I can't miss. It's coming down pretty good from that, but I don't think it's raining nearly that hard. I'm trying to look out at the street to see if the road's wet yet. Well, the, the wiper blades on the cars going by aren't going all the time. You know, it might be on that intermittent, which right. means it's not raining that hard. Now high school just Tim like Moyer making a nice play, third base coach. <laughs> Craig Clace over at first. Forgot we were, to mention the coaches. We were informed that the uh, coach's box was newly sodded, right? Yeah, newly solid last newly sodded last fall. Eric Wiesman, our uh, camera operator, running this camera. He and his dad, and Terry Berkowitz, were the main guys behind that. Uh, really did an outstanding job with all the work they did on the field. His first game would be about what May fifteenth, twentieth, usually somewhere in there. Sheboygan A's. Yes. May 31st is the first ah, game. That's the way to go the opposite way. Line drive out to left field by Taylor. Dad's got to be happy about that. We just came back from uh, Madison Tech in baseball. They played top-notch baseball. It's a juco down there. Mm -hmm. Just Sunday, and he had to hit before their batting practice and things. And the first thing the coach wanted him to do was be able to go the opposite way. Mm. He had the power to do whatever, but he said, that's what I want to see. So that I, when he does that, I don't yell at him much when he gets home. Put it that way. Taylor got a good lead and gets a good jump. He's going to be in there. Didn't need the slide, but he did. Stolen base for Taylor Schwartz, and uh, he got the big lead right away, boy. He was right yes, out there. Did Charlie Rissy before. I don't think he's thrown over the first yet at all. No, not at all. Shortstop starting to creep up a little bit, realizing that uh, they're not doing a good job of holding anybody. Gets off. I think check swing is down low. It's 2-0 and oh is the count. And uh, two outs, Taylor over at second base, lo uh, South looking to add another run. They already lead it two to nothing. 
be nice to blow this game open. Get the hitters count working for you. Ooh, want that one back, Tony? Right down the chute. Look to be at about the knees. Good by uh, Sullivan. Tony, big strong kid, got the legendary nickname Squanto for his leg squats in the, in the weight in room. Football, I think he probably set records. Coach ranked, did he, for squatting? Ball four. Hoytink draws a walk. That puts runners at first and second for South. Ian Evans up. Evans reached on an error and scored back in the second inning. So it'd be another clutch up time. Yeah, this would be a great time. A good speed at second base. Taylor can really run, unlike his dad. Yeah, I, <laughs> wheels weren't a part of my equation. Being a third baseman, offensive tackle, it wasn't. I'll tell you one thing. You know what I remember about playing against you guys? In, in Do I want to hear this football? or not? No, I'll okay. say this is a good thing. Okay. I remember I got a good block on you on a kickoff, and I'm pretty sure I knocked you down. But when I rolled over and uh, looked up, you were over right where the pile was, wherever they made the stop. Well, I mean, you got up and you went over there. I mean, you know, you just didn't lay down. and. But you and I knew each other since, you yeah, know, elementary, grade. middle school. And uh, the fact that I went to South and everybody went to North, we had that extra incentive, shall we say. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there's a certain history that's continued throughout the years, actually. And that is, I think, you know, you have a, a respect for the North side and, and just like the North side does for the South. And in most cases, I think the guys are pretty friendly. You know, it's not like there's a lot of animosity. You know, I mean, there's know nothing each other. bigger than a north-south game in any sport, but you're right. In one sport or another, it seems like they've all played together for look out one time or another. Uh, that was a nice play a bit by Southwest. You know, the second baseman juked in a little bit, and then he went back to his position, and that uh, triggered now, the shortstop. To we try just mentioned this. Has their coach got a mic on us? Because we told him they got to <laughs> start keeping the runners closer. Since then, they made two nice plays at second. There's a base Line hit. Line drive to right. This will be a play at the plate. Should be a play at the plate. He comes in throwing. Ball and is cut off. All right. well, they might have had a close play at home. Uh, Sullivan, really out of position, was in the cutoff position. He should have been behind the catcher. Cut the throw, and that allowed uh, Taylor Schwartz to score. But a nice base hit by Ian Evans. Another two-out hit. Those kind will pick you up, that's for sure, and, and do the opposite to the other team. Well, all the runs have scored after two outs on uh, clutch two-out hits. Ryan Lawrence with a two-RBI single in the second, and now uh, Ian Evans with an RBI single here. Trent had a nice base hit his first time up a line drive to left. Yeah, he, yes, he did. You know, most of the hitters are being patient and taking the ball the other way, and that's a good sign. Well, that's a, a sign of a good hitting team. And uh, I mentioned it before, but you know, thing you got to look towards too. That's uh, a positive is when you have the lower part of your order hitting the ball. Yeah, yeah, and we don't strike out a lot. I'll say that for South. We put the ball in play, and as you know, at the high school level, that uh, often things that's when things happen. It will any level, but right. high school oh, yeah. they're going to make their share of errors and misplays. And I was watching a right fielder come in at base hit. I don't think the grass is to that point where it's a little wet yet, is it? I would think it's a little wet, but it's so thick, you know, you can charge it hard. It's True. not going to go anywhere if it gets by you. Kerner with a one and one count. Took that pitch up, in the and it's two and one. I was going to say up in the strike zone, but it was up and out of the zone. Yeah, breaking ball around the eyes. On deck is uh, Tyler Ebers. Sullivan in the stretch. It's right down the shoot through it right by Kerner that time. I don't know if he's their number one or not, but uh, on the way to ballpark this morning, Taylor mentioned that uh, Coach Clay knew that the, his fastball is certainly hittable and that he was a two-pitch pitcher, so I'm guessing he probably is their number one, that they'd know that. So far, he's you'd, proven that. You'd and, think so. Yeah. That was a pitch for a ball that loads the count at three and two. The runners will be going on this pitch. Nobody's being held, so they should get a good jump. Make sure he's delivering it to the plate, however. There they go. Curveball is up in the strike zone for ball four. Tyler Ebers with an excellent opportunity here, Shorty, to uh, help his own cause. I know he had an infield hit last game. He hasn't batted all year, and I, they tell me there's a reason for it. Uh, but he put the ball in play last at bat. I think he ground one to third. Right. Rush making a nice play. Good throw across. Coach Clay's having a little conversation with him right now, probably telling him 
Don't take a first pitch breaking ball. See if you can work the count a little bit here. Salt on top three to nothing. Runners on, bases are loaded. Loaded with red wings. Ebers, first pitch for a strike. Nice fastball at time by uh, Ryan Sullivan. Marcus in the catcher. Curveball. Yeah, buckled him on that. Got the corner. Well, now he's got him. It's going to be, uh, Eber's going to really have to hang in there to make contact. Sullivan on top. No balls and two strikes. There are two outs. And got him with a high fastball. But South tacks on another run, and at the end of three complete innings of play, it's South three, Southwest nothing. If you give me a fish. If you give someone a fish. You feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish. You feed them for a lifetime. Give me a fish, and you'll feed me for a day. Teach me to fish, and you'll feed me for a lifetime. Through Volunteers of America, you can help change lives in your community. How many men do we need to get on base in order to turn the lineup over, you know? Right. So another, we're just discussing another clutch base hit, and uh, that was a big run to pick up. It's still only 3 nothing, but all of them came after two outs. All the way, Ebers is pitching, only allowing one base runner through three innings. Uh, maybe that will be enough to stand up. And oh. you had mentioned, I, I don't know if we were on the air when, we were, when you had mentioned this, that through all the games this year, South hasn't allowed many runners or many runs in a game. Yet. Now, if I'm not mistaken, well, maybe in, in uh, I take that back, I thought it was three, but I think uh, Luxembourg, well, no, it was three. We lost three to two. That's right. So it was three runs, I think, was our high in uh, any of the games given up, so you're going to win your share that way. Leading off is going to be the center fielder, Nick Bacon. Bacon standing in against Ebers. He struck out his first time back in the first. Oh. Plays a nice bunt down. Nice charge by Matty Hendricks. Did he keep his foot in the bag? No, but he's going to tag him any. Oh, he oh, missed, he him. missed him. Now, I think he could have just went back to the bag could have and tagged him. Well, if, if nothing if he else. Because I think he missed the bag. Oh, that I didn't see. Okay. But he didn't know that either, I'm sure. No. But uh, either that or go to the bag, he's got to come back anyhow. So You're wait right. for him. You're there. right. Yeah, just stand there and wait for him. I'll tell you who's really good at that was uh, Gary Granke, teacher over at North High, played in the Detroit minor league system. I think I remember him playing basketball a couple times years ago, right? He played. Uh, the name sounds he familiar. Played, well, he was on Futsy's team one year, and he played a few games, and then he injured himself and and didn't play anymore. But you know, you could just tell he was something special, someone special. When you know he's out on the field. Yeah, Bacon's on at first. Ben Chester is up. You know, it's one of those things. The old adage about uh, if a kid has a no-no going, that first one's got to be a clean hit. Right. And that throw did pull him off. Tougher play, but I think he could have had him with a decent throw, so I guess we got to give him an error. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, that was an error. Threw, drew the first baseman off the bag. Pickoff attempt at first place, unsuccessful. Ebers. Line that drive be to second two. base, double play. Kabai's wrist has throw, it. Threw a high throw, threw a high there. Both of them are wet. Well, the first out is recorded at second base. Schwartz's throw, relay throw, was way off the mark, but the runner not able to advance, so it just goes as a fielder's choice, four to six. We just um, talked about a wet, that looked like it was left his hand as soon as he threw it. Even the feed it was, was uh, not where he wanted it, so it's probably getting to that point. Nice play by Risto to scoop that baby up and get it to second base in plenty of time, and they're uh, throwing that ball out, Shorty. E even uh, Matt's throw to first, you know, so it's the infield's getting a little bit wet, and as the ball hits the grass a few times, we're probably going to see some of those, yet that's th three throws in a row that were kind of off. On first base is Chester. 
And now batting, lining one out to right field. Kerner stepped in. Now he retreats back, makes a nice play. That was Jesse Rush flying out. Turned him in circles, but he got to the spot. So good for him. Trent's playing a good right field tonight. Robert Bowers, the first baseman, is the hitter now. Number 18, Robert Bowers. Where are we in the lineup? Bowers is the number five hitter. Okay. So we're going right through the meet, and uh, Eber's doing a good job. They are hitting the ball, though. Give Southwest credit for that. There's a good breaking ball. He hasn't thrown one for a strike for a while. Well, Marty, what's the uh, innings pitched week? Is it by week, 10 innings? or uh, Seven innings every four days. Okay. And you can mix and match. If a kid comes in, let's say, and makes a throw, let's say he comes in with two outs and the base is loaded and he picks a guy off, that's considered an inning. Okay, so we don't go a third or seven right, two no, thirds or no, any of that kind of thing. Nope. And how about uh, the week starts on a Monday? Regardless, it doesn't of what matter. Do? It doesn't matter. Oh, really? So seven just days, in other words. Four days. Four days. Seven innings in four days. Okay. No balls and two strikes to uh, Bowers. Chester on it first. Pitch has fallen straight back. It's one of the better cuts they've had. Yeah. He's on that one. Bowers got his uh, money's worth there. Bowers number 18 on deck is uh, Southwest pitcher Ryan Sullivan. Bowers walked his last time. He's been uh, up to this inning, was the only base runner. Ball that one straight back. Gave him a good pitch to hit on 0-2. I can see uh, they've been busy because there were at least two or three baseballs hung up in the netting and now they're all gone. And I see Coach Clays is telling him down as he gets to foul, right. so it is yeah. getting wet. Definitely. No balls and two strikes for two outs here in the top of the fourth. Pop up. Ryan Lawrence. Ian, Evans take calling care of him. for it. Help him out, and, and he, does. he does. Good catch by Ian Evans to end the fourth inning at the end of three and a half, south three. Green Bay Southwest, nothing. sick again. You were always sick too. Not like him. You don't remember. He keeps getting infections. He takes after you. If your child is repeatedly sick, it may be PI, primary immunodeficiency disease, a defect of the immune system. The only way to know is by testing. Mom, this isn't normal. It's normal. It's not normal. Talk to us about PI. Back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park, where uh, so far Tyler Ebers pitching a no-hitter. I don't know if you've noticed on the line score that we show at the end of the half inning, they had Southwest with a hit. There you see it. that should be a zero underneath the H. Uh, that runner that reached back in the fourth inning, Nick Bacon, that was on an error, not a hit. Error on the throw. Number 22, Ryan Lawrence. So Ebers looking at a second no-hitter, Shorty. I was... Uh, Surprised that he had had two of them as a JV. I, I didn't know much about either. I talked to Steve Goes. I'm quite close with him, and Steve works hard in baseball, but he, he mentioned he thought he might have been the best pitcher he's had, and I think he's been coaching about six years now. Ryan Lawrence uh, leading off. Uh, that ball went off the mask, went off the catcher, and then it went off of uh, Keith Bondy's mask. Bondy giving him an earful, telling him, what the heck you doing? <laughs> He did. Well, he did drop, so we give him that. That ball is Line trouble. drive out the deep right field. Lawrence chugging along. It's a fair ball. Lawrence rounding first. He'll be up in the second base, sliding with a double. Not a boy. Good at bat. I think we're going to get a pinch runner. What do you think, Marty? I think he's. Uh, I don't know if he'll be able to make it to the dugout. <laughs> Rissy coming out to pinch run. 
Lawrence uh, chugging off the field. Did a great job of hitting there. He has been a good approach. He's staying back and either shooting in the middle or going the opposite way. Lawrence is two for two. He has a two RBI single back in the second, and now he doubles leading off the fourth. And stepping in is uh, Brad Burkhart. Burkhart uh, was called out on strikes. His first at bat. Uh, this might be a little small ball here. Brad uh, didn't look good in a breaking ball last Put one down, plus he does have good wheels. Well, I think it'd be an excellent, you know, get that lead up to four. Pitch in the dirt. Good Maybe. stop by Marcuson. First thing about bunting is make sure you're only bunting strikes. and Did a good job there. First baseman for uh, Southwest Bowers is uh, up on the grass as we speak, as is the third baseman, Bacon, or Rush, pardon me. Nice bunt. So everything executed well. And, and he missed the bag besides. Rissy does the job staying at third base, however. That was a good play. Ball didn't get far enough away, but uh, Burkhardt on it first with a sacrifice and an error. I didn't see. I think the throw was there. He just dropped the throw, right? Yeah, so just dropped the throw. It was right there. Should have had that one. So, and Brad has good wheels. As I say, we may put something in motion here. We have uh, a couple hit and run base hits this year as well, so I guess they can go all different ways, although with yeah. nobody out. Well, Burkhardt's a center fielder, so you got to figure he's got good wheels. I was, I'm never a big fan with nobody out of running. I suppose would have hit and run anyhow because uh, line drive double play can take you out of the inning pretty quickly. Coach. Uh, Not happy about something. Nope. He look, seems to be placing his anger at the catcher. And that's the catcher's call, but I didn't think he had to play at third on that bunt anyhow. No, 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 that was a great play. It was actually a good play all the way around, just the second baseman didn't catch the ball. Didn't look like it was that bad of a throw. No, I think it was there. Now, oftentimes, the guys they DH for are a good field, no hit. Now, the second baseman, I think you said they're DHing for, so. Right. I don't know what that tells you. Yeah, yeah, good point. John Kabai is up. Kabai is 0 for 2. He struck out and fouled out. The old fake Rick Sutcliffe move. Yeah. He's gotten a few guys off of that, though. <laughs> Did you hear Sutcliffe's interview a couple weeks ago when he's in San Diego? Mm. Talk about being bombed. Oh, that was a long time ago, Shorty. Give okay. the guy a break. Come on. Rick Sutcliffe. I never met a major leaguer I didn't like. <laughs> All the ESPN crew, they, they, <laughs> every player is great, no matter if he's a stiff or not. <laughs> <laughs> no matter if he's a stiff or not. <laughs> well, I think, I don't know if it was uh, who I was talking to or listening to, if it was uh, probably wasn't Sutcliffe, but he said, you know, when you do that, third and throw to first that's really a deceptive move and the idea of balking is to deceive the runner that's for sure swinging a line uh -oh. a bouncer they had a play at third but he threw it right after. off the back of Rissy and if it goes into foul territory runners for south are going to be at second and third Kabai is going to be at second and Burkhardt over at third I think that, that third baseman should just went to first or made a better throw to the plate. Well, you know, if he'd have gotten rid of it sooner, he took too many steps and let the base runner get in the path. But again, maybe it is a wet ball. Maybe he couldn't grab it. You know, we don't know that. But you're right. Otherwise, take the out. Well, error goes on the third baseman, but South does have another run. And stepping in is going to be Jake Risto. Risto has hit the ball hard, flew out. Well, actually, the second one wasn't very hard. It was a short fly ball to center, but the first one he hit pretty good out to right. Infield is in for Southwest. It's four to nothing. South on top. Back to the starting him off with the breaking ball. They got action in the bullpen. A right-hander. Is that number thirty-three? Thirty-five. Thirty-three is Nick Pargo warming up. There's Bouncing a base ball through the through. Drive. infield. That'll score two. Well, oh. let's see. Craig Clace holds up Kabai. We're at talking third. about a ground ball having a tough time getting through, but that had a hole written all over it. But the score, too, was uh, was premature in that they picked the ball up just about on the edge of the dirt. Well, seven, you know, when you got that infield drawn up, that uh, adds, hey, what do they say, about 50 points to your batting average? Yeah. That paid off that yeah. time. Ristol is over at first base, taking a nice lead. Kabai is over at third, and Taylor Schwartz in the batter's box. He's a one for two. 
singled and scored. Nobody in the out. Third. I'd like to keep Matt first for a while and give him that hole to shoot at. I know North and his Taylor when I was up left handed the other day had a shift on where they put Mitchell Gardner shortstop either even with or on the right side of the bag. Oh boy. Figure Taylor pulls a lot. That's why I was happy to see him go to base hit on the left his last trip. Sullivan delivers a breaking ball inside. Taylor gotta, swung at it and missed. He's gotta let that breaking ball under his hands go. That's about th I think three of them tonight. Just something to discuss <laughs> as we get home. <laughs> That pitch inside bounces away from Marcus, and runners will move up. I almost thought it hit him on the toe, but it missed him. Wild pitch. You know, at this level, when you throw that many breaking balls, you'd think there'd be more of those today. There's only been a couple in the dirt, one with nobody on, didn't matter, and now this one. Well, Marcus doing a pretty good job behind the plate, just not too much he could do with that one. Risto's out at second base now, and another run is in. Another pitch inside. It's five to nothing. Pardon me, six to nothing. South. They've tacked on three runs here in the fourth, and they're not done yet. Showing a pretty good offense. We put the heat on them pretty much since the second inning on. Well, if they there's a line drive way out to right center field. The That's right fielder isn't going to get this one. Hit rather well. Short hops the wall. Take three, Taylor. Keep coming. He's chugging around. He's going to make it to third standing with a triple. Great hit by Taylor Schwartz. Boy, you got to like that, Greg. Yeah, bounced around the 350 mark. He's been uh, dropping a bat hit, doing hitting well. And I go oh, a lot of that to Coach Rank and the football staff because, as you know, how strong he's gotten in the last year or so. And yeah, I'll tell you, when I remember him as a, as a junior and a sophomore especially, he was lean and mean. I mean, he's packed a little weight on him. Well, he broke his collarbone that year, so that, you know, but... I you talk to college coaches, and Mr. Rank would also testify to this. Each body type is different. You never can tell when the weight and training and all that's going to really kick in, you know. Sometimes when you're 16, it, it shows, and other times it's still 18. And some of the college coaches were telling me last week, sometimes you don't see it till they're in their 20s. Nick Pargo coming in to uh, pitch. Sullivan looks like he's going to go out and play first base or out in the field somewhere. Or in your case, Marty, sometimes it doesn't show up in your 50s even. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> maybe it shows up in about 6th grade. <laughs> I couldn't let that one go. <laughs> so we don't have any line in this kid, but uh, I think... He's a right-hander. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's about 5'9", right? Oh, yeah, he's not real tall. Looks like he's around the plate. Some position changes. The main thing is Pargo's coming in to pitch. Sullivan went uh, three plus innings. Couldn't get an out here in the fourth. A man on third, so get him in. Well, you know, they tack on three more runs. It's ten. Shut him down in the fifth. A uh, lot easier to pitch a no-no that way, huh? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, even if he shuts him down in the fifth and we score another couple there. Ball game. Yeah. Main thing is you get a win. As I say, we've got Ash Wobbin and Thursday non-conference, and I'm guessing just the way the pitching staff is set up. Oh, there's something that's going to skew, well, I shouldn't say skew the league, but make it different next year, and that is uh, adding those teams from up in the Green Bay area, Ash Wobbin on. Now, as far as I know, all the non-conference games will just be the teams you're not playing in within the conference, right? It may be the other division. Yeah, I'm not sure all that's all going to pan out. I know for football, that's the only way North-South could play each other. Tim Crowns is in the house. Must know the Southwest coach well as he's bending his ear down there. Tony, Hoy Tony Hoytink is up to bat. Taylor's Tim on at third. Tim has his cardinal red jacket. We always try to explain to himself his colors, but the... <laughs> <laughs> he's colorblind. <laughs> uh, the other night we did a show on girls basketball. Tim and uh, Amy Selk were on and uh, Susie Runis and Kayla Tetchlog from North and... Uh, Hopefully we'll have that on in a week or so. Okay, it hasn't Scott been Neal aired yet. There's a breaking drive. Ball waited. Base hit to left. Another run in for South. Tony Hoytank with his first hit of the day. So now in this situation, Coach, do you like to steal because let's get the 10 runs and get out of here, or is that like you know, I salt think that'd in the be wounds? rubbing it in. Just okay. hit your way to your lead. I don't think you need to steal anymore. Plus you 
open your player up to a possible injury True. on the slide. And we get a pinch runner in. Coming in for uh, South. I think that's is, Piawase. Uh, is Corey. That right? Piawase. Piawase. Good job. Ian Evans stepping in to hit. Evans is uh, 0 for 1. Oh, pardon me, 1 for 2. Singled in a run in the third and scored a run back in the second when he reached on an error. Pitch is outside by Pargo. Now, you know, we're showing a kind of an offensive explosion tonight. And uh, all this can only help for confidence. There's one that's hit Line drive. rather well. Yeah, Looks gap, like but uh, get there. center fielder comes over and makes the play <coughs> for uh, <coughs> Southwest. That's Nick Bacon. Boy, it was right in a gap, but uh, Bacon really filled that gap. Hung up there just a bit, yep. That's the first out of the inning, Shorty. Coming up is uh, Trent Kerner. Now, who started the inning off? Are we batting around yet? Yeah, Lawrence led it off with a double, and uh, okay. unless... Uh, Unless Kerner hits into a double play or Piawase gets picked off at first and they get Kerner, we should uh, bat around this inning. Five runs in in the inning. It's eight to nothing south. They've really broken it open. I still see raindrops dropping off the roof here, but and the flag has stopped. If you look in center field, you see... Right, just dead out there. <coughs> So left-hander throwing in the bullpen for Southwest, whether he's just throwing to get warm or actual warming up. Popped into fall territory. Markison comes in, and he dropped the ball. He made a good play on it. You know, <coughs> got his glove in great position and uh, just popped out. Actually, he made the attempt to catch it as in the old days when they used to have a small catcher's glove and they wanted you to kind of... Mm -hmm. Kind of trap it against your body, where in his, with today's catcher's gloves, you don't have to do that anymore. Well, I, what a, with today's catcher's glove, you got the flexibility. Flexibility. The other one was just a big well, round well, thing with one little yeah hole for, for one the baseball ball. size. Yeah. Falls went off on the right side. Out on the New Jersey Avenue. There's some serious throwing going on in the bullpen. I think the catcher's throwing as hard as the pitcher. Okay. Ball is hit foul. Out of play again. They're testing my stiff neck. I can't turn to the right, and they keep falling them off to my right. They're yeah, really lucky there's not a good-looking girl walking by. <laughs> there goes Miss Sheboygan, you mean, huh? <laughs> Kerner up. He's one for one in the ball game. Singled and scored in the second and walked in the third. He's going to be up three innings in a row. Takes that, that one out to right. That's going to drop in there. It does. Fair ball. I think he left both feet on the swing, but... Piawase round second, but then has to hold even though the throw was bad coming in. Runners on. First and second for South. Only one out. Tyler Ebers up. Ebers looking for his first hit. Number 17, Tyler Ebers. Ooh, it's a long inning, Shorty. Imagine how it feels for Southwest. Yeah, really. Rain coming down, cold, you're on the road, you're down 8-zip, still batting in the fourth. Ebers takes that first pitch up and in. Ball one. Your son, uh, one of the hitting stars tonight, two for three with a triple, two runs scored. Ryan Lawrence, two for two. Double and a, a couple pitch. RBIs. Yeah, we got a total of nine hits. I, I don't remember what our high hit total is. I think it's nine or ten. So. Yeah, they're spanking the ball around the yard today, that's for sure. Pargo's pitch is outside, makes it two and one. Speaking of hitting, I saw just in the paper yesterday following up the Howard's Grove article that the state of New York is is uh, banning. Yeah, banning metal bats. Yeah. Well, and they're uh, doing that in the Central Lakeshore Conference. Only... First conference in the state of Wisconsin, going to all wood bats. I think it's going to happen. It's going to take a couple of years. Be they're just going to have to because of the manufacturers. I heard the reason. You know, if they if they're going to do that, the level of baseball that should really do it is college baseball, especially Division One, because that's dangerous. Yes, it is. Those guys can hit the ball. But I heard the reason they don't is uh, 
the, the bat manufacturers have such a market on that that it's uh, very tough. You know, they sponsor the so Division politics one team. Are coming politics into is it. basically what it is, right? But you're right, that should have been changed. Mic trouble here. There we go. Is it my melon that's causing this? That could be. Maybe maybe when you talk you're just blowing the mic away. <laughs> But anyhow, back to the to the aluminum bats, and, and you know, there's Line a drive right up the middle. Oh, gets, gets through. through. Chugging around third and scoring is Piawat. Another run in for South, and there's still runners on at first and second base. Nice base hit by Tyler Ebers. Yeah, uh, he, he took enters it up the, the middle. hit parade, thinking with this grass that it wasn't going to get through, but the shortstop didn't show a lot of range. Lawrence stepping in again and coming out to run for South is uh, Nathan Julik. Julik, a big guy. I like that, number 25. What was your number in high school football? Mine was 25. 74, but the first game my jersey was missing. So I had 73, it was in the paper, but then they found it. I don't oh. know where it went. <laughs> it was in your girlfriend's locker. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had to take care of our jerseys, and those we couldn't buy them or have an option or anything, you know. But really? the school, the schools used to wash our jerseys yeah, when we that's played. That's our stuff was done. Lawrence with a long drive out to right center field. Hey, Bell drops in. There are runs. We don't have to worry about that. Lawrence with his second double of the inning, racing all the way around, is uh, Trent Kerner. And uh, Jurlik is on at third base. Opposite way for Ryan. He's having a big day. Pretty much smiling from ear to ear as he goes off the field. Really? You may see uh, Coach Clay put some uh, substitutions in. And he better hurry up. For <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <Because laughs> he's getting a lot of pinch runners in there, but I'll tell you. Well, the left-hander that's throwing is now coming in. Pargo uh, didn't have much success. When he came in, he did get in. an out, Marty. He got one out. Well, that's something, <laughs> I guess. We don't have number. Is that number three or number eight? Uh, that's a three. He's going to tuck his shirt in. Mike Lang. Would, would you call that Lang or Langy? Probably Lang. Lang, number three. Lang is now pitching. Ten run rule. We got, uh, let's see, count runs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in the inning. Plus the uh, other three. It would make a 10. I think I've got a 10 to nothing. Yeah, let's see. Ebers. Now we bat it around. Yeah, one, two. That's three, always tough four, on a scorebook five, right six, there when you bat around. Seven. Two runners on. One out only. I think it's. Uh, I think it's 10, Mike. Either way, we have enough for a run rule as of now. Of course, unless they score, we also have yeah. a no-no in the process. A shortened one will, will right. work. Yeah, it's seven, Mike, because uh, there's two runners on. Only one runner scored on that uh, long double by Lawrence. Show him. He doesn't believe me. <laughs> Burkhardt is uh, up to hit. Don't look at Bruce me. I'm just a color man. I'm not the mathematician. What do you teach over there? Nothing? <laughs> just social studies. Now, I had only, only had math for about the first 16 years. I thought is that it? I can't hang with those brainiacs for much longer. <laughs> brainiacs. <laughs> you figured out your email yet? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I've been <laughs> computer free since 1953. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> you were computer free before they had computers. Brad Burkhart uh, is left hander. Uh, look at how close he is to the. You know, they go, the umpire's got to get him. Back. True, he, he does. Up there. Isn't that that Christensen from the Cub? Hit that one guy. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. There was a lawsuit, and he yeah. had to pay it. Yeah, that was. He and was that, a and top the draft hit, choice too. The kid he hit uh, never did, when, you know, was able to play after You're that right. basically. And well, Christensen did sign, but uh, I don't know if he's in baseball anymore. He was a prospect. Not right. you mentioned. Yep. It. Oh yeah. yeah. That was big time problem. Well, they're bringing the infield in, coach. They want to nip it there, 11 to zip. <laughs> nip it in the butt. There's only one out. 
Burkhardt up. Left-hander delivers it, swinging at that first pitch. Burkhardt follows it out of play. We don't have a radar gun, but he looks to be about 65 on his fastball, so you got to wait back a little bit, get up in the box and wait on him. Lang now on the mound. Shorty told you the infield's up, and you can see they're all up on the grass. Unless they need practice that, you know, I don't understand the purpose of it, but... Yep, you get an out. Especially if the grass is getting slick. Line drive through. What did we just say about the infield being yeah, up? Really, that could have been an out. As it is, two more runs will score. That makes it nine runs in the inning. Burkhardt is on at first with a base hit. There it comes. I think this is Matt Hendricks up for his first at bat, so they're t I think that means you're taking the DH away or whatever you do. Yep. DH is now done. Kabai not going to bat. Hendricks will step in and hit for him. I know Matt went to um, a really good hitting school up in Green Bay. I don't know the name of the teacher. He does a great job. We went to one. and Lechner was, a, thought, a real good hitting coach from Oshkosh. I don't know if that still is. It, he probably is. I know he's a good coach if you can take his personality with it, you know. Oh. <laughs> I never met the guys. There's oh, line drive there. by Hendricks right up the middle. Stopping over at uh, second base. I believe that's a pinch runner. Or no, pardon me, Trent Kerner. Or is that Burkhardt, number two? Would That's that Burkhardt, yet. yeah? Yeah, Burkhardt. But in any case, Hendricks with a base hit. Be interesting to see the line scores are just hitting how many hits, huh? A bunch. Well, like I said, I don't do the keep the scorebook, but when you get the two at bats per inning, it uh, makes it rather messy, huh? Well, Lawrence has got two hits in the inning. He's the only one so far. There are a lot of people have scored runs. We have a uh, couple of visitors to the booth wondering about the actual score. We don't have that many fingers. <laughs> well, one, two, three, case, four, the five, camera's not six, on Marty, seven, but eight, uh, nine. Nine he's runs taking in his shoes inning. off, so I don't know what that means. It's right, Mike. It's got it. It's twelve to nothing. Infielders are trying to hold a runner on again. We're not quite sure of that. Puts a fastball in the corner. I think that was about five inches off, was it not? Yep. Hey, get the game in, right? Yeah, that's true, too. In case the rain comes down hard. By the way, the rule has changed in that respect this year. Suspended game, and you'd pick it up from the point that it stopped. Slow roller to second base. And out number two already. Left-hander throwing the bullpen. Another one. Looks like he's about 5'4". Bobby Shantz, you wouldn't remember him back in their early oh, 50s. Yeah, but I remember that name. Okay, he was uh, Cy Young in like early 50s. Pitched for the Philadelphia A's, and that's before the Yankees got him. When he showed that he was okay, the Yanks figured we better go after him. Yeah, they haven't gone after <laughs> much pitching recently, have they? Oh, it was ugly again the other day. Well, well we're leading the major leagues in runs too. allowed and runs scored, and it's a yesterday bad combo. Yesterday they lost, I think it was 10-8 to eight to Tampa Bay. And Agawa could never settle down, and neither could their bullpen. Although they do have a former Cub, which is never a good thing. Farnsworth, the best yeah. thing he did was make that tackle a couple of years ago. Five fly ball to deep left field. <laughs> racing back and making a nice catch on it for Southwest was Sean Bielmeyer, and that ends the inning, thankfully. Well, he hit it hard, Shorty, even though he didn't Really right-handed, he dipped a little bit. He tends to turn his head down, which causes him to get under it. Nine runs in the inning. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine hits. There were a couple errors mixed in there. And a couple of runners left on base. But there you see it. It should be a, a 12, uh, Scott. It's 12 to nothing. Okay. Change that 10 to a... So two out of three have 12, so we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a bear when he scores so many runs. You didn't, good, uh, good thing I got an eraser on my pencil. You didn't mic the dugout this game, did you, to ask Coach Clays how, <laughs> how we're doing the scorebook? <laughs> I do know that if uh, Tyler Ebers can uh, retire him in order 
and not allow a hit. He's going to have another no hitter this year. Is the the press isn't here? I wouldn't guess. I don't think they came in the last game until it was about over a twin bill. They have to call this one in. Yeah. Get on the horn, as they say. I think that's uh, the first time I heard music in the background today, live in the crowd up. Witnessing history here, South High baseball history, and yeah, really down to twenty-two on, fans here on retro night. The Redmen kicking butt. <laughs> <coughs> well, this makes for an awfully long ride home for uh, Green Bay Southwest. If you see a few defensive changes here, I see T.J. Crowns is in at second base, yeah, and I think that's the only change I I've, I've noticed. Do you spot any out there? John Goss is the pinch hitter for uh, Green Bay Southwest. Goss takes a pitch for a strike. He's batting for Sullivan. Well, you might as well get some of those kids in there, Coach. It's uh, nice to get some of those guys that make the drive down here. Yeah, true. Get in the game. Now, you got to be a little careful if you're Craig because your guy is working on a no-hitter. And you want to keep your best defenders in there. You're right. Goss swings and misses. You know, I mean, if you want to, you know, actually, your thinking is towards right. you know, allowing them to try for the no hitter. Coach has kept 17 players this year. I think that's more than most teams usually right, yeah, keep. Yeah, right. Well, hey, strikeout. Goss goes down swinging. You know, one thing that is nice about it, though, is you got the kids interested. Yeah. You know, they are coming out. I mean, some teams struggle to get, you know, 10, 11 guys on the team. I know the freshman team has about 18 or 19. I'm not sure of JV numbers, but uh, so. JV numbers, uh, 12. Okay. At the doubleheader. They lost a tough one in that. Uh, Did they end up splitting that, or was the North win both? They sp no. I know the freshman go? South won both. I think they lost the doubleheader. Okay. But the second game, oh, man, they had the lead late, and they had two outs, and a guy hit a double that scored a run and tied it, and then they walked a couple of guys, and then a wild pitch, and they lost it in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, no. And they actually did played a pretty nice ball game. I know they're not as talented as they've been in other years, but uh, they played pretty well, I thought, in the second game, uh, but they just couldn't come away with the win. Bouncing ball right back to Ebers, who makes the throw over to first for the out. That was uh, Ryan Donarski that uh, grounded out. So number nine is stick between him and Tyler Evers for uh, a second one on the year, huh? Yep. Uh, batting is uh, Sean Bielmeyer. Is this his first trip? Bielmeyer uh, struck out back in the third. So he's going to get a second look at uh, Evers. We're looking at a no-hitter, fans. History being made. Still got plenty of gas. Of course, we're only going to need five innings, but he still no. threw that one hard. Well, you know, it's get a long inning like that. you got to loosen up again. True. There's a beautiful pitch on the outside corner at the knees for a strike. One and one is the count. Now, looking ahead, he'd pitch one of the games in the doubleheader against Preble on Saturday, so with only five innings in tonight, he should be pretty well rested. Checking with Kerry Coetzer on some things. Ebers, two balls and one strike. I think they're just going right after him now with hard stuff. Yeah. Actually, they haven't proved all game they can catch up to a fastball. So. No, you're right. They haven't. I think uh, some of the balls that they hit hard were off breaking pitches or pitches that were up. Two balls and two strikes. There's two outs. Ebers looking for the no hitter. Bielema uh. had a good rip at that one. Oops. <laughs> Get it wet. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it down. Yeah, wants Ebers. a new ball in play. Tyler Ebers wants a new one right away. It must be pretty wet out there, Schwarty. Although the car's driving by, like I mentioned before, the windshield wipers are not going full bore. It's on intermittent. Either way, Marty, this is the last pitch. Here we go. He went. <laughs> <laughs> Ball in the dirt. Evidently, we're not hooked up to the umpire. Bielmeyer uh, 
really didn't offer at that pitch. Hey, you get a good shot there. Eric Wiesman battling the elements out on top of the truck. Again, no reason to throw anything but a fastball. There it is. Popped up on the inch. Short right. Oh. Kerner's been busy, and that should be yeah. the ball game. Kerner's going to make the play and does, and that's a no-hitter for Tyler Evers. There it is. I think the players are aware, but uh, not, a not a lot of jubilation considering, but I think it's because they just kind of buried them here. Yeah. Southwest coming out to shake hands. South with another win. Their conference record remains perfect. Final score was, uh, well, they mark it down as 13. I got it as 12. In Again. Any, in any case, it's a win for South. Rock, paper, scissors, Marty. Uh, rock, 13 paper, it is. One thing we know is a no-hitter. It's a no-hitter, and South did look impressive. Uh, defensively, we didn't have to make any plays, but they hit well, and obviously the pitching well, was well, and they're looking pretty good. Kerner made a couple nice plays out in center, you know, the way he retreated after the ball. He made some... Uh, Good plays out there. Made them look easy, actually. So sometimes you think that maybe it's not a good play, but uh, you make it look easy. That's yeah. going to just about do it, Schwartz. You got anything to no, offer uh, before we sign off? Again, we talked briefly before the game, and we said South wasn't really clicking on all cylinders yet. And I think this was a step towards that. You can just see the confidence in the hitters growing now. Again, they're a young team. They were good approaches. They were taking some of the pitches the opposite way. And they ran the base as well and just wouldn't let up. And that's a good thing when you have that killer instinct. Now, that's step two of a, being a good team. Well, yeah, you got to get that confidence going. And uh, they certainly had it going here tonight. Uh, great job by the crew. Uh, for my partner, Greg Schwartz, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.